you to the entire Scholey team for having this webinar. And it's uh, it's actually a great way to talk to candidates. Now there are no physical events happening. Um, so it's a great way through these webinars to be able to answer queries that people might have related to the enhanced version or the test center version. So I'm right here um, to resolve all those queries and also talk about not just uh, enhanced version of the online GMAT, but also the test center version and what are the tips for everyone to take care while preparing for the GMAT. I'll also uh, you know, spend some time on opportunities post the GMAT. So, so we'll try and cover a lot of areas. I hope uh, we were able to answer queries also post the session. But um, yeah. look. <sighs> OK, so I hope uh, my slide is uh, very clear. First, can you just once confirm if you yes. can see the slide? Great. So um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, the online exam, like I said, and I'll try and cover preparation and uh, free resources that GMAT is offering. And I'll also try and cover um, you know, test center GMAT and the differences and, uh, and then opportunities post GMAT as well. To begin with, this is for uh, for everyone's consumption. For those people who don't know, uh, the on enhanced version of the online GMAT is a two fifty dollar test, and uh, it's something that you take at home, and it has the exact same structure and methodology that the test center GMAT has. So there is really no difference. It's just for people who cannot go to the test center can actually just uh, take the test from home. So it's literally just the same exam. Delivery is different. Like I said, the enhanced version, basically you take from home. Uh, there is human proctoring where the proctor is going to be able to see through, um, you know, while you take the test. Um, and the video feed has to be on throughout. Um, it's very similar to way, the way we are doing a Zoom call right now, right, where there's a video feed. So there's a small block that the proctor will be able to see. And uh, this has to be on throughout. So. That's one way to basically invigilate uh, you all. Let's talk about the structure, the scores, uh, scoring methodology and uh, the score sending and then experience and then delivery. Structure is basically uh, very similar. In fact, it's exactly similar as the test center. We do have a quant, quant section, then there's verbal, there's IR and EWA. And sections have the same number in the type. And uh, you know, there's really no difference in time also allotted to each section as it was in the test center, as it is currently the test center, the same way online GMAT also works. Um, there are also two optional eight minute breaks. Earlier, there was just one five minute break that was there at the online GMAT, but now there are two optional eight minute breaks. And uh, uh, that's the same case uh, that you have in the test center as well. The scores are valid for five years for both cases, whether it's the enhanced online GMAT or test center. Um, there's one difference in score previewing that I'd like to highlight here. The score previewing can be done for both cases. That means that you'll be able to see your score as soon as you finish your test, your score will appear in the enhanced version of the online GMAT once you finish the test. And then you can decide whether you want to send that score or not. However, you cannot take any kind of printout or screenshot of that score because it's your unofficial score. You will get your official score within a week. At the test center, you will be able to again review um, you know, your, your score. You'll be able to see at the end of the test. But there, you can take a printout of the unofficial scorecard at the test center itself. And uh, you know, for sometimes there's a deadline in the school, you can, you know, for then, at that time, submit an official scorecard, and then you have to submit the official scorecard as well, which will come to you within three weeks. But in online case, you cannot submit the unofficial scorecard. So you can only preview it. So it just helps with no anxiety, at least for the one week, when till then, till the time you don't receive your official scorecard. And as soon as you receive your official scorecard, you can send it to schools. So that's one change, that's one difference uh, that I wanted to highlight between the test center GMAT and the online version. Um, there has to be minimum 16 day gap between two appointments. If you're taking the online enhanced version of the online GMAT, you need to wait for 16 days to take it again. And similarly for the same case for the test center GMAT as well. 
Moving on to the exam structure, um, this is something I'm sure you guys must be aware that uh, there are three section orders. Basically, there are three sequences that uh, is an option. You can take whichever sequence you think you will perform the best. This is the same sequence for the test center as well. So there's really no change there. Um, you can take AWA first, then IR, and then quanta verbal, or you can take quanta verbal, one of the two, and then follow it up with IR and AWA. It really depends on what your test taking strategy is. For some people, they want to take a strong section. Uh, you know, if you're strong in, say, quant, you'd like to take that first, then follow it up with, you know, something that you're not as strong in just to build some confidence. Sometimes people like to take a more challenging section, supposedly quant is your challenging section, um, you know, and your verbal is something that you take easy, then you would want to, some people like to take a challenging section when they're fresh, you know, their mind is fresh just at the beginning of the test. So it, it all depends on what your test taking strategy is. And that I believe should come from uh, practice questions, practice exams. So do take full length practice exam and wherever you perform the best, that's the sequence that you should take your test in. But the great thing is that the online enhanced version of the online GMAT also has that ability. Like the earlier online version did not have this section order flexibility. Now you have it. Overall, the total test is three hours, seven minutes. And this excludes breaks. So breaks are about eight minutes each. So 16 minutes of breaks. Otherwise, the exam time is three hours, seven minutes only. And as I'm sure you're aware, of, you know, there are other tests like GRE, etc., which are much longer. So that way, uh, GMAT is a much shorter test, which makes it a less stress, uh, you know, giving test, I would say, because time, obviously, the more time you increase to a test, more difficult it becomes for you, you know, to stay focused and stay concentrated. So that's um, one advantage that you have. Like I said, it's a $250 test. You can register on MBA.com and the slots for the enhanced version of the online GMAT are available every 30 minutes. So, uh, you know, you don't have to really worry about slot availability. Um, the test center version of the GMAT, um, there you need to block uh, slots much, much in advance. You, I doubt you'll get the very next days. And also because of COVID, I'm sure you're all aware that uh, due to the lockdown in many places, due to health and safety concerns, many of our test centers are closed. In fact, um, last I checked, about 50 to 55% of our test centers are closed currently. So you really need to check, uh, and I'll just put it up, put up a, a site where you can actually, let me just do that right away before I forget. Uh, it's mba.com slash find a seat. So just go on to this uh, link that I just sent to everyone and uh, you will be able to check whether the test center near you is open or not. And if it is, then you can go ahead and book a slot. Uh, there's one thing I want to tell you that a mask is essential. So you have to wear a mask uh, when you take um, the GMAT at a test center. Obviously, you don't have to wear a mask if you're taking the test from home, uh, you know, because you're alone in the room. Uh, but at a test center, even if you're that at that time alone, because there will be definitely an invigilator, but even if you're the only test taker in, in that room, you have to wear a mask. Um, I've already spoken about these um, previewing and uh, you know the score sending options, but just one point I wanted to make here is that there is complimentary unlimited score sending. So for the test center GMAT, uh, you have five free scores. Uh, that means when I say free scores, I mean that you can send to five programs free of cost your score. After that, there is a fee. There's $35 that you have to pay for to send your score, your official score to every program. This is beyond the application fee. But the application fee is absolutely not our business. It's something to do with you and the school. But GMAT uh, otherwise charges a fee for you to submit the official score to a school. So that's $35. In case of enhanced version of the online GMAT, which is the online GMAT version, basically, it's absolutely free. So uh, there are no charges. You can send uh, your score to as many schools as you'd like, uh, to as many programs. There is no upper limit also there. So make use of this opportunity of this format. And a very big announcement that I want to make today is that Aadhaar card is accepted as an ID for the online GMAT. This is something that we'd been working on for many months. And uh, finally, we were able to launch this. Um, so 
as of now, Aadhaar ID can be used other than the passport. So passport could also be used. If you have the passport, you could use that as well. If you do not have a valid passport, you could use a valid Aadhaar card to, uh, you know, as an ID proof to take the GMAT at home. This facility, this, uh, you know, ID uh, alternative is only available for the online version of GMAT, not the test center. For the test center, you still need the passport only. So uh, just clarifying here, you can use the Aadhaar ID only for the enhanced version of online GMAT. And um, it is an alternative to passport. So if you have the passport, you don't need Aadhaar, obviously. But if you have Aadhaar, you don't need the passport. You can use either of them. Uh, the other question that I get very often is that if my Aadhaar card is not linked to my mobile number, if it's linked to my parents or, you know, some other relative, can I still use Aadhaar card? No, you uh, you can't. You have to make the change to uh, your mobile phone. So you have to make the change on your Aadhaar ID and make sure your mobile number is linked to that Aadhaar card, not not anybody else's. Uh, it's it's something that you can do online itself. So just it'll, it'll hardly take less than a week. So please do that uh, if your Aadhaar card is not linked to your mobile number, if you're planning to use it for GMAT. Uh, moving on, um, let me actually also paste this link that I have here uh, for all of you who have, you know, more uh, questions related to Aadhaar. Let me just paste it right there in your chat window. Read the instructions carefully on how to verify and uh, then move forward with using um, Aadhaar. Let's talk about registering and managing your appointment. This is something that's, that's I'm sure you're well aware of, uh, that you cannot take the online GMAT more than two times. There's an upper limit uh, to taking the online GMAT. There is. Uh, you can take the GMAT overall five times a year and eight times in a lifetime. When I say overall, that includes the test center version and the online version. The online can be taken twice and the balance number of attempts are uh, for test center. Along with that, uh, like I just mentioned, there needs to be a 16-day gap between the two appointments. But if you're switching formats, for example, if you're taking the online GMAT, and then immediately you want to take the GMAT at a test center, you don't need to wait for 16 days. You can take it the very next day. But if you're, uh, if it's, um, if you're taking the online GMAT, you need to take it again. You have to wait for 16 days. Similarly, if you're taking the test center GMAT, you want to take it again, you need to wait for 16 days. Accommodations are available for people uh, with disabilities. So there are extended time uh, breaks given to those people. You can apply for it on mba.com. Let's talk about check-in process. Uh, so here uh, you must run a system test and I'll share some important links uh, later in the chat window. But there's a system test that you must run before you take the, uh, before you take the online GMAT. It's very uh, important for you to test your internet speed, uh, especially for uh, this version of the online GMAT. Well, uh, you need at least 1.5 Mbps to take the test at home, but I would suggest for an optimal experience, for a smooth experience of the online GMAT, I suggest you have two Mbps. So that's something uh, that you must have all the time continuously. So if you're able to, for example, do a Zoom call you know, with, with, uh, with someone for about three hours, that means that you're sorted for the test time. You, know, you would need uh, more time. Um, you must also install a secure browser. All of that information is mentioned, uh, you know, on the website that I'll share later. So it's on mba.com itself, but I'll share the exact microsite uh, in the chat window later. After you run the system test and you confirm your hardware th that time, and uh, you know, you can definitely then block the test because that means if your if your system test works fine, that means you can take the online GMAT at home. Then you can go for registration. And uh, once you've registered, you can take the test at home anytime. I mean, sometimes you, you can get a slot the very same day or the next day. Uh, slot availability is not a problem with online GMAT at all. You can get a slot any time of the day. You can even take the test at 2 a.m. at night if that's where, if that's the quiet time of your house and that's you know the time where you think uh, you have maximum concentration. So depending on whatever works for you, you can um, 
take the test at that time. And um, there are some simple basic checks like 360 degree scan uh, of your desk, of your workspace, which will be, which will be asked by you, uh, by the proctor. There are many questions that I get, you know, that how can I actually uh, show uh, the whole view, but all you have to do is just like, you, if I'm right now, I'm doing this webinar using a webcam uh, of my laptop. You don't need an additional webcam. You just, you can pick it up, show the room to the proctor. And uh, if the proctor thinks that, you know, this is good to go and there's nobody in the room and there are no, um, you know, suspicious material, etc. There shouldn't be any books idly, or there shouldn't be any paper lying uh, close to, uh, you know, on your work desk. Once the proctor is satisfied with uh, the basic checks through the camera that is installed on your system, um, then you can start with the test. Uh, your uh, video recording should be on throughout, even during breaks. Again, that's one question that I get that, can I get up from uh, my uh, seat during the break? Yes, you can. So you can get up and you can go uh, for, uh, you know, anything, you can take a, a, a toilet break, you can go and eat or drink something that's totally okay during those eight minutes, uh, but your webcam should be on. Uh, when you come back, make sure you come back within eight minutes because the time, uh, if the more time you take during the break, then you're eating away into your next section time. So just eight minutes will be given for the break. Make sure you're back that within eight minutes. And um, you can get up from the seat during the break only, but uh, make sure that your webcam is on. That's, I that's something that I wanted to highlight. Another preemptive question, something that I actually get quite often. So I'm just, I'm, I'm assuming you also have that question is regarding whiteboard. I'm sure you're aware there's a physical whiteboard that's allowed. So basically on, you know, on your desk, you uh, must have, um, you know, a whiteboard with you where you can do all your workings. Um, make sure that uh, uh, the whiteboard that you're using should be absolutely blank uh, before uh, the break, uh, before uh, the end of the exam, even at the start of the exam. So, you know, after the end of the exam, also the proctor is going to ask you to rub everything and show the whiteboard to him or her. And uh, only when they're satisfied, they, you know, end the test and um, uh, then you're good to go. Uh, but uh, I wanted to also say that the question that I get very often is that, uh, do we have to focus the webcam on the whiteboard all the time? Like, do we have to all the time show our workings? No, that's not needed. Uh, you will be required to focus on your face only, not really the whiteboard. If the proctor asks you to show the whiteboard, then you have to, but otherwise the focus of the camera will be your face, not the whiteboard. I think that's all that I had to share on this slide. Uh, next one is about, again, uh, whiteboards. Since we're talking about whiteboards, there's a physical whiteboard that's allowed. There's online whiteboard also that's allowed. Online whiteboard, you can practice in mba.com. We already have a practice tool there. So you'll know how it looks like in the, at the, in the real test as well. Physical whiteboard is something that you easily get on Amazon or Flipkart. It's, I think, for about 300 or 500 rupees, uh, you can buy it. And uh, it's an erasable whiteboard. It's a very simple, traditional whiteboard that you get. Nothing fancy about it. Uh, it shouldn't be larger than 12 into 20 inches. You need dry erase markers and dry eraser. Well, the exam experience is super secure because not just the video is getting recorded, but uh, uh, I mean, not just that the live video is on, but the video is also getting recorded actually. So uh, once uh, you know your exam ends, um, your video recording is also with us. So in case there's any issue, any technical issue or any issue that uh, you, might, you might have faced or the proctor thought something was not right, we can always look back at the video just, just to make sure that uh, you know nobody is able to cheat during the test, and the exam experience should be fair and secure for everyone. Okay, since we've spoken at length about the test experience at home, let's speak about the test experience at the test center. 
I have mentioned a few things here. Wearing a face mask is something I wanted to point out because that's something that's new that's introduced. Just everything like palm wave scan, electronic signature, everything was already there at the test center. So just the, something that's new that's introduced is the face mask. There's also the policy of social distancing. So earlier, you had more slots available because you know many people could take the test from the test center now because of um, social distancing. We, we're not allowing too many people to sit at the same time to take the test. So if you have a good internet connection, if you have power supply, if you have your own laptop uh, that you can spare uh, for the online GMAT, I would suggest you to take the test from home. It's, it's really convenient. Um, you know, you use your own machine, you're familiar with uh, your system, you're familiar with the surroundings, um, you know, so all of that, if it reduces your stress level a little, I would suggest you to do that. But in case that doesn't work with you and you definitely think you need to go out to the house to take the test. You need that environment, uh, you know, a very different environment, which uh, only then your concentration power is, is, is supreme. Then I would say then obviously go for the test center. But we have both options available and uh, GMAT online doesn't have an expiry date anymore. It used to earlier, it used to, you know, there used to be a validity to GMAT online. And in September, we said it's going to be valid till November. Then then it was valid only till December, but now it's, I just want to announce it's a permanent solution. So it's not something that it's going to end uh, when uh, COVID, you know, like uh, goes out of our life, uh, hopefully soon, but it's not that it's going to end there. So online GMAT will be an option throughout, um, even post COVID. Talking about score sending, I have, uh, briefed you all, I think, in the beginning about this new feature that you can preview your score. Uh, this is just a repetition of the same. Uh, your score will be visible to you at the end of the test. An official score will come to you within a week of, um, uh, of your test. The school gets it within eight hours. So as soon as you get your official score, um, the school, uh, and if you kind of decide to send that official score to the schools, uh, then as soon as you press a send, you know, on MBA.com itself, uh, let me show you again, on MBA.com itself, this, the way you see this uh, bar right here, you see, uh, sorry, you see the uh, circle, right? The red circle. So there, if you can see the score, the send score tab is right there. If you just click on it, it's going to send your score. Uh, you know, it'll decide, okay, this score needs to be sent and to whichever school uh, that you want to, there'll be a list. You can just select there. Uh, Control F helps really, and then just select whichever program you want to send your score to. And uh, the school, when you do that process, the school gets it, gets your official scorecard within eight hours. So there's really no lag uh, between, almost no lag between you sending the score and the school receiving it. And um, so making sure that the deadlines are definitely met. Um, of, so keep a tab on all the deadlines for all the schools so that you know when to take the GMAT because you're going to get the official scorecard only after a week. So make sure uh, you take the GMAT. If you want to take it two times, then I would suggest you to take it at least a month in advance so that in case you don't get a good score, you can take it again. And then, uh, you know, within a week when you receive the score, you can send that official score to the school. We've spoken enough about the features. Let's speak about uh, preparing. Well, I'm going to talk majorly about, uh, you know, the free resources right now. Obviously, you can go on MBA.com. You can see that is exam prep section. And uh, the exam prep section has everything, has your exam packs, three and four, five and six. It has official um, practice question pack. It has an IR tool. It has one tool. So it has a lot of products. But right now, what I want to talk about is the free products, because that's something that you don't have to pay for at all and you can do it right away. Uh, one is I wanted to talk about the practice question pack, the exam pack one and two, which is the starter kit basically that's absolutely free. So uh, there are two full length GMAT question basically tests, which uh, have questions from retired, uh, you know, GMAT tests or from, uh, you know, previously uh, those questions have appeared in the past in, in the GMAT. So we've used only those questions. So, so you'll know exactly where you stand according to the score that you get in your, uh, in your practice test. Along with that, do also have other practice material, which is free. 
uh, like this podcast that I wanted to talk about. Let me just paste this link right here because this is something I'm not sure if you're aware. Um, here you go. Uh, just go on to this link. And uh, just go through the, these podcasts. There are about 18 to 20 episodes of a GMAT experts. So they're all actually GMAT employees talking about uh, the GMAT exam. There is our prep product head talking about how to use the OG 2022. There's um, how to study uh, for GMAT in eight to weeks. Uh, then there's also, uh, you know, uh, where do you, uh, how do you find, what is the difference between online and the test center version, which one you should go for, what are the common myths about the GMAT. So there are lots of questions uh, that you might, that, you know, you might have will get answered through, the, through these, you know, half an hour long podcast and there are about 18 to 20 episodes. So whenever you have some free time, just uh, go onto this link and uh, go through the podcast. The other bit that I wanted to uh, talk about is that our official guide uh, ebook version is there available on Wiley. So in case you're interested in buying official guide OG 2022, uh, which is the latest one, it's available. And let me just share the link. Okay, I hope you got it. So, um, so just go on to this link if you want to buy uh, ebook of OG 2022. As of now, I don't think it's available on Amazon as yet. I didn't check today, but anytime we're expecting Amazon uh, to start uh, getting, to start listing our physical book, uh, OG 2022. A quick recap of what we spoke about, the difference between the test center and the online version. I mentioned already the structure, the content is the same. Registration has to be done on mba.com and uh, scoring scales is between 200 to 800. Um, appointment availability, I've covered uh, exam experience. Just feel free to go through this slide. Um, I've spoken about the score access also, how unofficial scorecard you can see at the test center. You can take a print, official scorecard comes within three weeks, whereas for the online version, the unofficial scorecard you get at the end of the exam, you cannot print or you cannot take a screenshot, but the official scorecard comes within seven days. Um, also for at the test center, you can preview your score. You can you know accept it or cancel it at uh, the test center itself, or even after you return back home within 72 hours, you can cancel your score if you didn't like it. Because if you don't, then uh, the score is going to go to the previously selected five program. So for test center, uh, the process, how it works is that you go to the test center first while, you know, you fill your form as to, you know, your name and your ID and everything. And while you're doing that, you also get a chance to uh, decide with schools, which five programs you want to send your score to. This is before taking the exam. Then you take the exam. And if you cancel it, then your score gets canceled. If you submit it, then the score will go the official score, whenever it will come, which is, you know, it will come within three weeks. But that score is going to go to the schools, to the five selected schools um, that you selected before taking the exam. In the online GMAT, that's not the process. The process of the online GMAT is that you take the test. After that, you get your official score within a week. And that's the time you decide whether you want to send your score or not. If you don't want to send, there is no need to cancel it because... You know, uh, it's a score that you have. If you want to send it, you can send it to schools. If you don't send it, then automatically the schools don't get your score. So there is no automated procedure of, you know, sending the score. You have to manually like select and decide to send your score to that particular school. And you can select as many programs. You don't have to select it immediately after the test or at one go, because that was also one of the questions that came from a candidate. Do we have to send the, the score to programs at one go? No, you can actually select five now, you can select 10 later, you can select 15 you know, after a month, depending on whenever um, you feel like you can send your score to uh, as many programs as, you, as you'd like. 
Last bit, I want to talk about the value of GMAT. Well, uh, this is a conversation which I had to include because there were uh, there are that's quite a bit of a chatter around, you know, whether you should take the GMAT or take the GRE or take any standardized test for that matter or not, because some schools are going optional, even good ones. Uh, you must have you know seen those media headlines. Uh, you know, or some articles where poets in quant saying, okay, no, it's it's actually optional. So why should I take this? So well, uh, here are my six points that I'd like to share with you. This is something that even schools resonate with. And you'll also hear from a school director talking in the next slide. But mostly the whole idea of taking the test is A, it helps you stand out. Um, and you don't need to, it's, it's just basically giving another data point to the admission officer who's sitting right there. Uh, whose um, whose only job is to select you or reject your basis, right? And uh, if if you have a GMAT score, if a good GMAT score, then he's more inclined to select you, right? Other than obviously there are other factors also that are seen beyond GMAT. There's your extracurricular, there's uh, academics, etc. But if your academics are low, if you're not very uh, thorough or not, you don't have a great academic score, then I would say a good GMAT score will balance that out and will you know, overall project a good profile. It also helps you provide secure scholarships. So that's, uh, again, a point that comes very often. We hear from candidates themselves that a higher GMAT score definitely helps you get scholarships from schools. Uh, candidates also, uh, this confirms that they are ready to take on the course, like you know, to really study for the MBA, because more or less, um, MBA uh, during your study also you will be doing a lot of um, communication whichever line you take uh, be it marketing or HR you will definitely have communications uh, and verbal ability which tests you on logic will test that you know how do you interpret paragraphs how do you interpret emails how do you so this is actually making you job ready right so GMAT is is one of those tests which is making you MBA ready and MBA is actually making you job ready so, uh, or, or business ready, I would say, for those people who want to take up entrepreneurship. So, more or less, it's actually preparing you for your academic rigor. And uh, this, is there, is, this is your way to demonstrate your commitment to, uh, you know, graduate management education, to commitment to doing post-graduation. Because uh, you taking the test, you spending those three months, uh, you know, of your time to prepare for a test also gives your, acad your admission officer um, you know, uh, a heads up that you are actually ready and you are, will go to any length to actually get into that school, your dream school. And that definitely gives you more brownie points. And obviously, it helps you also secure job interviews. So, um, you know, it, it, at, at the end of the day, we're doing an MBA. Most of, most of you must be doing it for a job. And some of you might be for, for business. But for those people who are doing it for a job, be it in consulting or finance especially, uh, many times employers will ask for your GMAT score. So at that time, if you have a good GMAT score, instead of justifying why you did not take the GMAT uh, when you know, maybe 90, 95% of the class did take the GMAT, would be, you know, might put you in a difficult spot. So it also helps you in securing jobs in your interviews. And here's one of the quotes that, uh, you know, we had from uh, uh, the assistant dean of Yale School of Management. Uh, so he actually said these following points and the points actually resonate very well with what we at GMAC also believe in. But I still thought um, I picked some of the statements from his email, from his from phone conversations with them. And we have many schools. Yale is just one of them. But we have many schools who talk about, um, you know, uh, how GMAT really helps them evaluate. And these are assistant deans, you know, out there looking at your profile to get into uh, the school. So, so you can go through, I, I can, you know, wait for about five seconds, but do read through what, uh, you know, he had to say. Okay, moving on. Uh, this also proved to be one of the actually uh, most competitive years. You know, the fall last, uh, the fall admissions last time uh, was actually um, it was it was very competitive because a lot of people who had who had you know opted for deferrals had to be admitted this year, and then there were also this test optional bandwagon, and you know, so th there was a lot of competition, uh, and the competition will only increase even this year. 
because there is so much of you know pent up demand. Uh, many people who deferred because of the pandemic last year would want to maybe seek admissions now that things are opening up. US seems more or less back to uh, normal. Um, we obviously as a country, we are not yet there, but, uh, but if you're planning to study abroad in the US or UK, it things seems much better than what they were last year. So definitely there'll be, a, there'll be immense competition, but I would say that, you know, if you, if you prepare well, if you have a good GMAT score, if your overall uh, profile seems very well rounded and all the points are checked off there, then definitely you will be able to make it. Speaking about the opportunities post the GMAT here, I've, I'm, I'm not going to talk about every college in detail here because then we, we won't have any time for questions. But this is just to give you a snapshot of, um, you know, some of the defer, deferred programs that uh, these schools have. There are top schools. And if you're in your final year of admissions, I'm not sure uh, right now if most of your work experience or have uh, uh, or have or are in college. So if you can just type out in the chat window also that will help me understand um, if you if you're working then how many years of work experience you have just mention w dash and then just write the number of work experience it could be two three or whatever and if you are a graduate just say g uh, you know a fresher or a graduate just say g uh, and uh, that will just help me understand whether you're all you know just graduates or if you are undergraduate if you're still pursuing graduate just say ug so just three options there it'll help me just understand what uh you know who am i today addressing majority of them so just say w in case you have work experience and dash a number of years if you're an undergraduate still in your final year of graduation just say ug and if you're a graduate a fresher just out of college right now uh, then just say g thank you Till then, I'm just going to show you um, some of the MIM programs. This will be more relevant for uh, people. Okay, so what I see is majorly working professionals here, but there are there are uh, there are quite a few graduates and undergraduates also. But yeah, there are a lot of people with work experience. So so great. So, uh, so these are MIM programs and is, is majorly for graduates. So for all of those people who typed a G there or undergraduates, UG there, you should definitely look at this, these MIMs. This is uh, FT rank 2020, basis of some data on the course fee. And uh, the MIM programs are basically masters in management. They are mainly uh, based out of Europe. Uh, there are very few in US, but MIMs is majorly um, based out of like London, France. You do have great schools like your HEC Paris, London Business School, et cetera, who offer MIM. And then there's obviously the MBA programs, you know, something that, this is not very updated because there was some ranking issue, like many schools did not opt for ranking. Um, so this, this you still see uh, FT rank 2019, but then there are MBA schools. Please go on and check data for yourself and go for most updated data. Uh, but I would say FT rank is just one of the rankings. You don't need to just blindly follow it. You can also look at, uh, you know, uh, US business schools ranking. You can look at uh, QS ranking. You can you know, or, or, and, and also please, uh, you know, ranking, I'm sure you understand, but there are many categories which um, are used to rank the school. You know, uh, there's alumni, which is interviewed. Then there's a difference in the salary from when you, you know, before you started your MBA and when you finished your placement, what was your salary then there's, and what is the jump like that is seen? That's one of the criteria. Then there is criteria around how much of the batch was placed. There's criteria also around uh, academics and, you know, um, what kind of areas are covered if there's so there's a lot of things that are seen for ranking uh, but you know make your choice basis the destination that you want to study in not just don't just go by ranking but uh, decide as to for yourself whether you want to go to europe whether you want to go to us um within europe also since there are so many countries and every country is kind of different so what is your priority where do you see yourself not just do an mba but also work in that same economy for good two to three years at least you know so that you get a good return on what you've invested in so a lot of these uh, decisions have, are to be made there are lots of schools in europe uh, around germany ireland etc where they're giving amazing scholarships some of them are really like the fee is really low 
uh, they're not maybe the most well-known ones, but uh, the fee is really low. Uh, ROI is great. You can also look at those schools. Uh, but overall, I would suggest don't just go on the popular sounding ones because there are many schools which have a really good cohort, which have, um, you know, diversity is like one of the criteria, which is also seen for ranking. If that's your major, uh, you know, uh, aim that, you know, I want, I want to interact with a different, uh, you know, a, a school where we have different people from different uh, cultures, from different regions, and that's where I'll learn the most. So then go for, go for a more diverse school. But overall, I just say that uh, look for what your priority list is rather than just blindly following, you know, the, the rankings. And that's about it from my end. I will uh, stop sharing now and I can 